Hey, deserving listeners, love is blind. Let's see what comes out of my face as I watch. And because oh. it'll be the first time I've seen him since yesterday, um, early afternoon. Last night, I had planned like this super cute DIY thing to like arts and crafts and like. Okay, so it sounds like what AD is saying is that she hasn't seen him since the day before. And he did say in that previous scene that he does work out of town sometimes. But the details of that working out of town, I mean, I don't know, maybe it, it's legit, but he was talking about how something he was doing for work was like an hour away. And I'm thinking, well, anyway, I, I don't know. But she's not only saying she hasn't seen him, but it kind of sounds like she hasn't talked to him or something. Like they don't have a lot of knowledge or connection or something, which is consistent. And then also, I assume that he's supposed to be there right now. And then it also sounds like AD thought he was coming home last night, but then he didn't. So, yikes. Wrote out 25 reasons why I think like you're amazing. 25 reasons you really think yeah, he's amazing? Sure. Okay, okay. Like really from my heart. Bought him like all these things and all his favorite snacks. I wrote him a card and I like set it up on the... I don't know, but the way it looks is most people in AD's shoes would at the very least start to distance themselves and lower their expectations and might even, at least in their mind, just break up with them, break up with Clay. I don't know, but we're not seeing any of the intimacy. Now, maybe this is a Chelsea and Kwame thing where they're editing it funny. I don't know. But I mentioned this because I noted in the pods that when AD and Matthew were having that scene. I was actually talking to my hair cutter about this the other, day, the other day. And I mentioned the fact, I think, from my memory, that when Matthew was caught having told two different women the exact same set of things, I want to meet your dad, I want to carry you away, I just want to go home with you right now, uh, basically I want to marry you without saying that directly. Uh, and then Amber, without even talking to Matthew, apparently just bounced, which you know I think most people would do. And then for AD, she went to talk to Matthew, and I was thinking AD was really going to let him have it, but that didn't happen. And then I thought, well, because at that point I was thinking AD had a pretty level head, a pretty, uh, pretty level head. <laughs> She's level-headed. It's funny that it's like you could be level-headed, but if I said, wow, you have a really level head, it's, it doesn't, it's like literally what the phrase means. But anyway, so I thought that I could, at least as a citizen watching the show, I could depend on her to protect herself. And she met up with Matthew, and there was that first date that they had, date or conversation, and uh, she didn't really go after him. She was She pretty quickly was more influenced by him, you know, that language he was using of, you know, I know that you want me and I know what you're thinking. I know you're in love with or whatever, you know, all that kind of language, which was really creepy. Uh, creepy, I'm not, a, I'm not a huge fan of that word, um, which was concerning and notable. And then I'm thinking, well, maybe AD was just testing the waters and waiting to take action. She's not hasty like Amber. So then she'll She'll break up with him because obviously <laughs> I can't imagine anybody in AD or Amber's shoes. That was her name, right? Amber? <laughs> yeah. Um, that would consider marrying someone after that happened. I, I could see thinking, well, you know, maybe we'll date and we'll see how things go. But to rush towards marriage over the next five weeks, having just observe that, especially given all the other things Matthew did. But anyway, so then there was another meeting with AD and Matthew, and I'm like, okay, well, for sure. And then he like got her back in, and she was back in it, seemingly. There was a little hesitancy from her, but it wasn't, there didn't seem to be any sort of concern. AD tells Matthew that Amber left, and Matthew was not very happy about that. He starts, you know, pacing around talking about America's watching and all stuff. And uh, what my hair cutter th remembered was that AD 
broke up with Matthew. But that's not what happened. What AD did is she just continued to, I don't even know what, she seemed like in a daze the entire time. Or like she was still in it with Matthew. And then Matthew was the one that left. You know, and the simple uh, narrative is that Matthew left because he wanted to be with Amber. And since Amber left, he wanted to be with Amber. But I don't think we can bank on that because it's hard to know what Matthew wanted or was thinking. And the way that I was interpreting it just looked like Matthew was caught and was realizing that, oh, you know, with this stark behavior of Amber just ditching him, he's now faced with, oh, I must have screwed up, you know, and he doesn't understand why or how or he... Anyway, and then he starts to get into his head. It's like, oh, you know, America's watching. They like an underdog. And then he's thinking, I've humiliated myself, and I'm not really here to actually find someone that I want to connect with, so I should just cut my losses and leave. It just kind of looked like that to me. Anyway, so AD, from my memory, never actually broke up with Matthew. So we can't depend on AD to to stand up for herself and know that she should stand up for herself or notice things enough to even in her heart preserve her uh, uh, self. And so with Clay, it just kind of looks like a more longer version of that where there's a lot of mistreatment uh, and or at least tension and or a lot of signs that it's something that you might not be able to depend on, including what sounds like that he just didn't even show up last night when she was under the clear impression that he was going to come home. And we hear what she's doing is that she was setting up this this super romantic date. I'm guessing that the cameras were supposed to be there too, because that's typically something that they would have cameras there for, right? And then she writes out 25 reasons why she loves him and wants to marry him. That's a a beautiful gesture. (laughs) But given the context... You know, earlier at that other family meeting, he's like, so what's the problem? And then the, uh, you know, the mom says, well, you got to give grace, you know, and she's saying, and, and, and it's interesting. So I was talking with my wife about Clay and uh, my wife was just like, there's something about the way that he talks that just is, you know, it, it, there's something off about it, something that kind of bugs me. And I threw out a couple of adjectives like, are, are you perceiving him to be kind of like this or like this? She's like, no. And then I said, does he talk like a salesman? And he says, yes. Or he said, <laughs> my wife said, yes, that's a salesman. That's it. And I thought, huh, sales. Could, I mean, it was interesting that I thought of that word as well. So it must be somewhere in there. And so I thought about it for a while. And, you know, he is a salesman. That's what he does for work. But that's too simple of an explanation. Um, And I do know people like that. (laughs) Um, But I think a a more general thing that I would say about Clay potentially is that, you know, when you are treated poorly, and we know at least one detail that repeatedly happened, that his dad would uh, drag him along to cheat. And, you know, on what, if you don't really know the trauma of that, let me lay it out, that you know as a child that you're being used. Just think about that. That your parent, not only you're being used, but your parent just doesn't even care about you. You're just an object. They are selfishly doing something and you're just a, you're just a, an object. You're just a plaything. You're just like a, a tool. And that is upsetting as a child. It would be better for the dad to just have ignored clay but to be used and then as a child you're you're desperate for that attention and so you will really like be trying to please and then that split loyalty problem of you got to choose between your your mom and and your dad and you know when if if you're if you have a if say you have a couple you 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 have friends that are in a couple you're friends with both people one of them says that they're cheating it throws you into this dilemma it's like do I uh, am I there for my one friend that's cheating, or do I go to the other friend and say, "By the way, you're cheating"? It 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 it's distressing. That's distressing. But imagine if you are a child and it's your parents. <laughs> you have 
no practice. You have no base. You have no support. You have no wisdom or experience with this kind of stuff. It, it, there's so many elements that just twist your brain, and it, it, it's, it's, it's awful, just truly awful. It's, it's, it's very, very abusive. And I don't know, but typically why a dad would do that is because he wants to use his child as an alibi so that when he comes home and mom says, where were you? The dad can say, we went to the park, right? And the kid's like, yeah, we went to the park. Just think about that. It's not that they, he just brought the kid along in all likelihood. Why would he do that if he was cheating? Repeatedly. Okay, so we just know that detail. And I'm guessing that the trauma goes way further than that <laughs> in terms of neglect or narcissism from the parent or uh, abuse, um, something. Because to have that behavior and have that be the only thing that Clay suffered from would be bizarre. Because the fact that the dad could do this means that there was probably a global issue there. The fact that he was chronically cheating to begin with. So there's that. And when you're a child, then it teaches you a lot of lessons. You don't matter. You can't trust other people. You can't be truthful. Right? Oh, my God, I just made that connection. That's obvious. So I don't know, but in all likelihood, when he came home, because he did talk about how his mom to this day doesn't know about most of the cheating. So that says that he would have to at least repeatedly lie by omission, but he would also watch his dad be a salesman to his mom. And then he would learn from, okay, you got to, okay, how, how do you put on a smile and convince and, and obscure with smoke screens, and it's okay to do that. It is okay. Uh, all of us learn our moral center from our caregivers, from our environment. And although we might be a moral individual, we might care about other people, our, the range of what is acceptable, what's considered you know, within the limits of what normal or good people will do, and then outside of those limits is what bad people do, we learn that. So... If you learned that, then you learn and you're trained because I got I to gotta sell them to my mom. And then, I don't know, there could be a whole other set of things, things at school or the mom could have put him in other kind of psychological knots as well. Who knows? But the, the premise is distance to protect and to obscure and to play the game to be very good with seeming like you are on board, very good with your, with your nodding, you know, like he's barking at AD at that. And then the mom says, Hey, you know, and it, cause the mom says, Hey, you just need to start giving grace. And he immediately turned it on with his mom. I think that's notable. He immediately just, started, Oh yeah. And he was just nodding his head. He said, Oh yeah, totally. So I thought, well, maybe this is helping him, but it, it just looked like he was placating, selling. And what my, what my wife was picking up on was, he's always talking that way. <laughs> he's never himself. He's never authentic. He's never real. He might not even know who he really is, which is distressing to think about for his sake. So anyway, we're hearing that she thinks he's coming home. He doesn't come home. And she's doing all these things. So I think we're seeing two problems. I think AD has a mode that she goes into, and I'm guessing that mode is based on a premise that she is worthless. You know, we heard her talking about the, the body image issues. Everyone has body image issues in our society, <laughs> but that can point to a whole set of things that are standing on a foundation of, I am not worthy as a human being baseline. You know, like I said, everyone has body issues, but if you have a, a foundation of I'm a good person, then you, you suffer from that internalized notion that you're disgusting or something. But baseline, you're okay. And in a pinch, you're going to notice that you're being mistreated and you're going to, at, at the very least, start to distance yourself. So she's, as he's pulling away, seemingly she's leaning in even further. Now, maybe the relationship is a lot better than I and that I'm seeing. Maybe she is protecting herself on the inside, but it doesn't really look like that to me. Mm -hmm. And it's still sitting there. 
Does he work for the Secret Service or something? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> okay, so he arrives seemingly late, or it was engineered that way or something. I don't know. But that's happening, and we'll see how this goes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I had a little time to get a little yeah. haircut today. It's been a slam-packed day, though. Yeah, for sure. Per huge. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Sure? Okay. Slam pack day, haircut, per use. I don't know. It, I, I don't know. Maybe he's in it to win it and he just works a lot, but there's also a chance that he works a lot and he just doesn't care enough to put in the effort to actually seek AD more. It also seems like even the time they do spend together, it's not very intimate or connected, reassuring to AD. It could also be that he's out of the relationship and he just doesn't want to spend time there. It's also a chance that he's dating other people. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I mean, well, I don't know. I don't know. I'll hope for the best. And uh, with AD. You meant to be here in this process? Or? No, with AD. Like I was made to be here for AD. But I, I guess the toughest thing is like when you look at yourself in the mirror mm -hmm. and like, can I give her everything she's given me? Mm -hmm. and my parents were married for uh, 24 years. Okay. So, I don't know if this looks salesman to you. It's hard to know, but he did just say something that was, I think, interesting to me, that he said, at the end of the day, when you look in the mirror, I have to figure out, am, am I able to give everything, that, uh, am I able to give to her everything that she's giving to me? Let's rewind that. But I, I guess the toughest thing is like when you look at yourself in the mirror mm -hmm. and like, can I give her everything she's given me? Mm -hmm. and my parents were married for. Yeah, that that's, I think, an, an honest thing that he's saying. It could mean that he's on the fence or he feels bad, but it also could mean that he is either revealing or accidentally revealing where he knows the relationship is, which is that he doesn't want to give her as much as she's giving him, which would mean, I think, based on the context of what he's saying, it would mean that he shouldn't be with her. So it's interesting, you just kind of, maybe he'll go into more of that. For uh, 24 years, I saw how like divorce kind of split up our household. Mm -hmm. And of course, like, you know, just letting, letting mm -hmm. the past kind of affect my relationships. I do have stuff that I struggle with, like stuff with my parents' relationship. I never went to therapy, so a lot Wait, of- Why do you say your parents- Okay, so that's promising. It sounds authentic. Uh, it could still be obscuring something or salesman-like. And it wouldn't be unusual because a lot of people on this show, I think, will decide in their minds they're not going to marry that their fiancé, but they stay on the show anyway, and they just have a lot of phrases like this. I know it can work. You know, it may not be 100% perfect, but it's perfect. I'll be back. I'll be back. We're going to, I want you to still give some points to talk to me. I love it. I love it. <laughs> they already have the tools that they need. Is he is he leaving, leaving, or is he just going to the bathroom? If he's leaving, leaving, wow. <laughs> this short appearance, or is he, he's just going to the bathroom, right? Need to make it. Wow. <laughs> Amber. Amber. That's a man. And he's just a little bit... She called him Amber. I think I saw that, yeah, AD's name is Amber something. And Matthew was with two Ambers. <laughs> Watching him walk down the street and you're like, that guy looks good. And you guys connect on that. And then it's a one night thing or two weeks, whatever. Do like he's got I some mean? substance. You, you know, mean? but he can't be worried about... <laughs> so she, AD keeps saying, do you see what I mean? And, and then she's... I mean... Uh, uh, in context, I would have thought she said, you see what I mean? He's great. But then she's crying. Or maybe, she, I don't know. I, 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 she keeps repeating that. And I wonder if the mom is actually hearing her. Um, like you can't sit up and worry about divorce because you set yourself up for failure. Wipe your tears away. Don't you dare. Come here. Know, just like, let's just but, take a um, deep breath. And let's just. I just think. Is he not yeah. Uh. At, the rate, at any rate, I, I'm curious about their relationship because it kind of looked there that AD was trying to plead or make a point. You know, she's experiencing something and the mom is just bulldozing. Let's rewind. Night thing or two weeks, whatever. 
Do like he's got I some mean? substance. You, you know, I but mean? he can't be worried about um like you can't sit up and worry about divorce because you set yourself up for failure. Wipe your tears away, don't you dare. And then you see Adie's hands. I think what she's telling the mom is, can you slow can you stop and listen to me? So I think that might say something. I don't know. You can't generalize one interaction to a whole relationship, but I am I am very curious about AD's schemas and relational traumas, and I am always looking for signs. Yeah, just like, let's just but, take a um, deep breath, and let's just... I just think... Is he not gorgeous? Well... <laughs> I'm just, like, really grateful for you, like, speaking to my character and... Um, it's just supporting me. Okay, so that sounds positive, right? And so, okay, it's good. And showing up for me like you always do. And honestly, like, Clay aside, you being here means like this more than you know. Again, I, I'm reading into it, but what does that mean? She did say that the mom was always there. So if I take that to heart, then her saying, you being here means more than you know. It could be like, I just always appreciate when you hear, or is she saying that she wasn't sure if mom would be there in that way? So she's saying, I really appreciate you being here. It means a lot to me because there have been times when you or other people have been there for me. And so it, this is reassuring. I don't know. I'm curious. I, if I were you know, her friend or her therapist, I would definitely inquire more about what she might be saying there. She could just be saying something nice to her mom. I don't know. Young lady, you are awesome. But like, do you see where the the roadblock? Yeah. And the sad part about that is what he's worried about is not even his. I know. Like, you can't take on your Okay. I think that's what she, you know, do you see what I mean? And then the roadblock. What What is the roadblock? Is it that... Is the narrative that there's a roadblock to him wanting to get married to AD, his family history, his point of view about marriage? I could see that because that is a narrative that often will be um, operated from, particularly about men, right? That men, for whatever reason, are commitment phobic or they have a hard time with marriage or something. And... I want to tell everyone that baseline without societal gender brainwashing, that's not the case. <laughs> There's really no difference. People of any gender have a pretty good chance, a um, lot of averages, of really wanting a long-term attachment romantic partner. Certainly there are some people that seemingly aren't really made for that lifestyle. Yeah. So this notion that like women are really in marriage, I, you know, I imagine if you watch this channel, you know that and or you've heard me say a lot of things along those lines. So I don't need to repeat that. But that's not what they're saying. I, I don't know. I'm just really curious as to or is AD talking about, you know what I mean? He just left again. That's the roadblock. What, what's happening? But it's also scary for him, too. We talk about like love is blind, mm -hmm. but it's really are you going to walk by faith and not sight at this that's point? It. Are you going to walk by fucking faith? I've never heard you say you're going to follow somebody. I, I'm not even trying to be funny. I'll follow a man never, off a cliff I've without never. a... She's saying she would follow him off a cliff. Huh. And the mom's saying, I've never heard you say that about a man, that you'd follow him. I wonder what AD means by that. And given what I was saying earlier about my worry that AD has some kind of mode that she developed in response to some relational tension of like turning off her self-preservation that is in line with the following, right? Like, yeah, there's a lot of different uh, narratives or values or ways of you know, living your life, ways of even defining the word follow. But that's, that's, I don't usually hear that word, right? Like for me, if I think about my wife, I, I don't think of either of us as thinking that we're following the other person. 
right? Plus, if someone said that to me, I would, no, don't follow me. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. Uh, uh, let's, I need you at the front. Let's, let's walk side by side as we both figure this out. I, I don't want to be responsible for that shit. Plus, like, are you a child? <laughs> but I don't know what they mean by that. But it is, at least it coincides or it's in line with my worry that I was saying that that mode that she might be going into. And this, and this that phrasing, I would, follow, I would follow him off a cliff. No, don't follow him off a cliff. That's not a good thing. <laughs> that's, that's not, uh, it's not romantic. It's not healthy. Uh, no. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm worried. I wonder if... For AD, the more insecure she gets, the more this mode she becomes. That it, well, I just use this as a jumping off point. You can think about it for yourself, and maybe if you feel comfortable talking about it in the comments below, or you know someone like that, and it can be very frustrating to the individual. And if you're watching someone do that, if they're a friend of yours, uh, it is a response to trauma and attachment threat that the, the person as a child developed. They needed to, or they were forced to, or something. It's basically a, there's different versions of it, but basically you're just turning off your your competence, your agency, because you had to when you were young, because you believe that you don't matter, or even if you think about yourself, then it leads to bad things. Anyway, so there's a lot of different path pathways. I don't know if that's what I'm seeing, but I remember early with Matthew, I was like, I feel like we're seeing a different side of, of AD. So now maybe everything will turn out fine. And he, uh, but anyway, she said something uh, uh, earlier as well. She said, you have to go on faith. And yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. When you make a commitment or even just continue to date somebody, there is a, an amount of faith that you have to have, or what I would say, trust. And for sure, but in a situation like this, where you barely know somebody, going on faith is a lot more risky, right? And trusting someone is a lot less rational because you just don't know. If AD and Clay want to continue to be together, I'd much rather have them just date for a while and just see how things go because there's so many variables, uh, particularly around Clay's behavior that you just wouldn't necessarily know in this short amount of time. All he needs to know is that you're there and he's got to do the rest. He's got to yeah. do the work. Uh, I think that this is, can I come over there? Let that stuff go, <laughs> you know? Come here, guess what? Hey. You're awesome. So I don't know why I want to mention this, but I don't know if I'm just seeing it this season. I, I, mean, I certainly saw it in other seasons, but there seems to be a lot of questionable camera angles and editing of um, women's body parts. Uh, I won't replay it, but there was this moment where they're filming behind the mom. The mom stands up and then it, and you know, it's just her behind. It's not like, you know, this scandal, but take it from me as a video editor. <laughs> Especially in a scene like this, you'll get real micro, especially when you probably have at least three, if not five cameras to choose from different angles. So you have this moment in time that's captured by all five cameras and you have mom and daughter and mom stands up. You have a camera that is behind the mom over mom's shoulder at AD. You have another camera that's over AD shoulder. You have a two shot. You probably have like zoom ins on each person from you know the, the side, and the one shot that the editor cho chose to include as she as she's standing up is the camera behind. Even though there's no visual there that's critical, you know, if AD was making a face, like you'd really need to see that from the front. But now I, it could just be that I'm looking at it through this, uh, you know, Vic this puritanical lens of like, ooh, someone's bottom, who cares? Hey, who cares? It's just it's just a bottom. People have bodies, whatever. But I don't know, there just seems to be a fair, you know, the, the bean dip thing. And there were some other scenes too that I, I didn't highlight 
some scenes with um, I'm forgetting her name already <laughs> with Brittany that I I just those shots were more obvious to me because just showing from here to here <laughs> when there's no other data that you know, if if they're doing something with their hands that happens to be between here and here but when Brittany's just sitting there in her bikini and there's this you know even if it's half a second it could or a second long it's not it doesn't linger but and again uh, uh, it really depends on what each individual would feel about it you know maybe Brittany's like uh heck yeah uh, you know show my stuff but i imagine that it's not what they would necessarily prefer and you also have to think about what kind of message or who you're trying to appeal to or what sort of um, you know objectifying you're perpetuating as a as a show now this show didn't create sexism and um and objectification of women and maybe even the intersectionality right of of women and being black so it's not their fault but i don't know I just, i'm just notable we don't know and i don't even know if i'm reading it right maybe this sh- season has even less of that sort of thing maybe it was just a mistake in the editing i doubt that i mean take it from me as an editor every single microsecond is scrutinized to tell a story and to especially on reality tv where they're constantly frankensteining conversations but i you know who knows what's happening but i can say generally speaking we should all think about particularly you uh, heterosexual cis men out there to really think about a way in which our society is oriented around objectifying women treating women like objects treating women like pieces of meat having all a lot of images if not every image basically from a man's point of view this is why we call it the male gaze we've come a long way we have i'm old enough to remember when it was a lot worse and i've seen archival footage or tv shows or advertisements from before i was born to see that uh, we've come even further from that so you know I, I i think we still have a ways to go we should appreciate that we've done a lot as a society and a lot of people in my field and other disciplines have advocated you know the the discipline of feminism has done a lot so we have a lot to thank the giants that we stand on the shoulders of but uh but I, what do you think? I, I'm really curious what you think. Maybe I'm just, I don't know, just making stuff up. Don't try. All the things that you've done in your life before that you've tried at. <laughs> I did it. When you was in that line of <laughs> two or 300 women, you came out. I don't know if it's just a preference of mine, but a lot of times on this show, when someone is suffering there seems to be this real, a lot of activity from the support person, I shouldn't put in a quotes, from the support person of talking and building the person up. And maybe all the individuals being told those things, that's exactly what they need. I don't know. But like with uh, Lydia last last season, and I, we've seen it a number of times, even among AD and Clay's support system, that when suffering happens, there just seems to be a lot of yammering at them. And I'll just say for myself that, uh, and I'm sure a lot of other people are like this as well. I know a lot of other people like this as well. When I'm suffering, I don't need to be just yammered at and given a bunch of uh, inspirational phrases. What I want is, uh, even if it's just sitting with me, not saying anything you know what i want is the space to have emotion i want to feel that someone cares i don't want someone to tell me a bunch of inspirational phrases that are basically saying that if i just you know have the strength then everything will be fine because i know from experience that maybe everything won't be fine and certainly I might not have any control over the outcome. So just telling me that I need to be strong or something. And what does that mean? There's sort of an implication often in American society that you shouldn't dwell on the negative or you shouldn't be sad or something. 
I think there's a good chance that AD has a lot to be sad about. And actually, there there was one one moment I remember that was along the lines of what I'm talking about from my memory. It was uh, during Queer Love. Uh, do I have that in my notes? I don't think I do. Um, it's on a different uh, uh, document. Anyway, it was Sam and Sam's friend, I think I remember. They're, on, they're sitting on the curb, and I think their name was Sam. And there's a lot of emotion and a lot of uh, suffering that's coming out, and the friend is listening and asking questions. I get chills thinking about that moment. That So just imagine like that moment and the person listening is just like yammering. Now, yeah, maybe AD, this is exactly what she wants. I can't speak to that. But I do want to mention this because generally speaking, in my experience, most people don't really know what to do when someone else is suffering. And there's a lot of modeling of this kind of behavior. Don't cry. Everything will be okay. And that is mostly coming from the support person's anxiety about someone that they love suffering. It's tempting just to say, everything will be okay, don't worry about it. When you don't know that everything's gonna be okay, and certainly the person that is suffering doesn't feel like everything's gonna be okay. (laughs) So the best thing you can do when in doubt is just don't, don't offer anything, really. No advice, no perspective, just what are you going through? Tell me more. How do you feel? If you need to, ask, would it help if I gave you inspirational phrases? Would it help if I tried to tell you there's another way of looking at that? And if the person says, yeah, that's not really what I want, then don't do it, right? If they say, sure, give me it, and then you'd give it, you know, so... Uh, often on this show, I'm just like, just... Plus, I'm kind of just curious as to what more is in AD's heart. I don't... There's not a lot of listening to AD. Number one, there's nothing you can't do. It. Give it your all. And for some strange reason, if he doesn't think that your all is enough for him, then that's not your guy. Now, that sort of talk is helpful, and it seems to be landing with AD. That's not just inspirational phrases. That's just saying maybe something that I might even suggest, depending. But So I'm not saying she's just like bulldozing. It seems like AD very much appreciates her mom. So I'm not saying, (laughs) I'm just saying in my style of listening, I guess in my circle, it just doesn't typically look like it does on this show. There's, you know, and if you listen to my audio podcast, you might have heard some moments, you know, with Birdo or with Rebecca or with, Bob, it, it, there's just not a lot of, it's just not in the style. And there's many different styles of listening and caring about people. Hi. Hey, hey. <laughs> He's worth the fight. Oh, you heard me say. Okay, so he must have just gone to the bathroom. <laughs> Thank goodness. Okay. May I have your blessing to marry your daughter? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I really appreciate that. <laughs> See, I'll, I'll stay a little bit quiet because, you know, I tried to stir him up a little bit. Tonight. Okay, well, that went a lot easier than we were, or I was thinking it'd be, the way that Amy was talking about it. The dad doesn't seem rigid at all. Uh, the way that Amy was talking about him. Now, maybe the dad has changed, or he's just saying that in the moment. Yeah, If you watch 90 Day Fiance with me, I'm reminded of that moment with uh, Rishi and Jen, and they confronted the parents about their relationship, and the parents were like, sure, it's fine. And then as soon as the the Jen and friends left, the parents were like, fuck no, no, <laughs> that'll never happen. So the dad doesn't look like that sort of guy. So that's good. It's great. Or... He is very strict about these kind of issues, but he sees how great Johnny is. But, you know, they, I think they met like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there's a lot to see in their relationship that is positive. All right, well, let's adjourn there. I want to remind everybody to please take care of yourself. Take care of others as well. Maybe that's something you can think about right now. Who in your life next to you or 
far away from you needs help. Someone you know, someone you don't know. Uh, either way, it is the moral thing to do. And, you know, if you believe in such a thing, what comes around goes around. And it feels good to give. And we can do all that because we all deserve it. We really, really do.